um, taking time for questions. And to the extent that we um, we have time uh, to answer questions, um, but again, we'll be keeping a good log of these questions and we'll um, provide responses um, and post them to the website at the same location that the uh, webinar recording is placed. So again, thanks to all of you for being here. Um, we will uh, get started. And um, please use the chat feature um, in cases where you have a question so that we know to um, address those questions at the conclusion of this event. Before we get started, we want to um, just find out where everyone who is participating in this webinar um, is, um, is at within our state. Um, we'll be using Poll Everywhere for this, um, for this activity. And um, in cases where you've used Poll Everywhere, um, what you'll want to do is, or in cases where you have not used Poll Everywhere, you can participate either by, via browser or using your text message. Um, and you'll see that the uh, browser information is um, located on the left uh, visual uh, for the phone, the pollev.com forward slash OEC Colorado. And um, if you choose to participate via text, you'll want to text to the 22333 and then enter um, your response. So let's activate the poll. And hopefully this works. It may, it may not. Um, it actually may not work. Oh, just one second. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, we can start to see some of the responses coming in. We see well, we could see. Just one second, we're just going to have to flip around the screen view here and get to our browser. Um, so you can see that um, we have Denver, Larimer, Adams, Jefferson, very metrocentric. Um, and we'll keep this posted um, just through the duration of the webinar so that um, as individuals uh, submit their response, you can see the, um, uh, the larger the response, the more prevalent um, and frequent that response has been submitted. We have Golden. So I'm going to just, uh, for the sake of time, go back to the webinar um, uh, webinar view. And we'll keep keep moving along. So I first wanted to show some I first wanted to just show some um, assumption or some um, rules of operation um, 
uh, are kind of procedures that were used for the logic model assumptions. And we know that the Race to the Top Early Learning Challenge grant is um, boosting efforts and accelerating efforts that have been happening in our state for the past um, 10 years or, or more in some regard. Um, the logic model really um, acknowledges that um, is focused very specifically on the Early Learning Challenge Grant, and we want um, folks to understand that we acknowledge that this is just one piece of the larger system, but we feel like this can provide a good um, foundation for us to have conversations around um, the linking and aligning and building um, and collaboration uh, that will be critically important. We also understand that family and community engagement and commitment are critical to the successful outcomes for children um, and that it takes all of us um, at the state level and uh, local level to accomplish um, uh, the information. Um, programs um, uh, that are improving outcomes for children and families will require stable and diverse long-term funding sources and a requirement of the Race to the Top Early Learning Challenge grant um, certainly includes uh, the component of sustainability which will be addressed here shortly. Uh, data is crucial to the success of this work and um, just theory of change increased resources and support for effective early childhood programs and workforce will result in the comprehensive, um, improved long-term outcomes for children and families. This is just an overview, again, of that pie chart that I mentioned um, earlier. The grant has uh, four strategic priority areas, smarter management, stronger workforce, better quality, and deeper understanding of children. But as we went through, uh, kind of went through the process of developing the logic model, a, a fifth area became, um, was identified and we have incorporated the increased family and community engagement component um, in this section. So I'm going to pass the, um, I'm going to now have Cheryl Shushan join us um, and she's going to kind of provide an overview of, um, high-level overview of the Smarter Management section, and as mentioned earlier, really focus in on kind of the short-term or near-term goals and our status to date on those. And then um, we have four other um, members who will be doing the same uh, for the other areas of the logic model. Um, so, Cheryl? Hi everyone, this is Cheryl Shushan. I'm the Early Childhood Leadership Commission Manager staffed within the Office of Early Childhood. Um, here to talk to you today about smarter management. Just a few things to refresh your memory. Um, as you probably know, Colorado was awarded $44.8 million with the Race to the Top Early Learning Challenge grant. And that's a four-year grant that runs from 2013 to 2016. Um, the grant priorities for the Race to the Top are to increase the school readiness of Colorado's children and to decrease the gap in readiness between children with high needs and their peers. The Race to the Top Early Learning Challenge grant focuses on, one, improving the quality of early learning and care, two, building a stronger early childhood workforce, and three, determining and supporting the school readiness of each kindergartner with the theme of family and community engagement embedded throughout these other three areas. In an effort to harness these investments and increase the number of children ready to learn when they enter kindergarten, it was important to establish a priority area that focused solely on the coordination and alignment of programs and efforts. So, as you all know, Colorado's Early Childhood Framework was established in July of 2008, and this framework really established a vision that all children are valued, healthy, and thriving. In addition, it outlined cross-sector collaboration and shared outcomes for children birth to eight. Colorado applied for the Race to the Top Early Learning Challenge grant in an effort to accelerate those outcomes identified in the framework and also made three overarching commitments um, 
to young children and families. The first one was really a focus on alignment of early childhood programs with a single state agency. We now know that that state agency is the Office of Early Childhood within Colorado Department of Human Services, which recently celebrated its second anniversary last month. They also committed to a more formalized coordination of programs that reside in different state agencies. The Race to the Top Early Learning Challenge Grant really deepens the partnership between the Colorado Department of Human Services, the Colorado Department of Education, the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, and the Colorado Department of Higher Education. So, as I'm sure you all know, the Colorado Department of Human Services is the lead agency for this grant, and they're responsible for the grant components related to the governance and smarter management, the early learning and development guidelines, and the next generation quality rating and improvement system. The Colorado Department of Education is the lead agency on grant components related to the expansion of Results Matter, the School Readiness Assessment, and the Early Childhood Workforce. The Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, they're the lead agency on the grant component related to developmental screening and family leadership. And finally, the Colorado Department of Higher Education is working closely with the Colorado Department of Education on early childhood degree programs. The third commitment was really a heightened focus on local coordination and implementation. And this really speaks to the partnerships, for example, that have been established with early childhood councils and the child care resource and referral agencies. So this priority area that focuses on all of these coordination and alignment efforts is what we refer to as smarter management within the Race to the Top Early Learning Challenge grant. The smarter management logic model is divided into three components, system collaboration, efforts towards sustainability, and effective use of data. In the logic model being displayed now, um, you can see that the outputs that are represented, um, they're really the action items or what we are going to do. And then we have short term, which is one to two years, mid term, and long term goals that are identified in the right hand columns. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go through this very comprehensive slide. I'll leave it to you to um, read all of these various bullets. But I just want to highlight a few examples. So within the system collaboration component, one action item is to identify and develop additional resources to support implementation of systems integration. In order to accomplish this goal, the state is committed to to continuing to strengthen the shared vision and goals among the partners within the state, across the state, and locally in the 64 counties within Colorado, so that collectively the early childhood field is working together to ensure child and family success. The long-term goal of these efforts is that families experience integrated systems and children have a strong start in order to be successful in school and life. The second component of smarter management is captured in the efforts towards sustainability. Um, this component states that a short-term goal is to ensure that the cost of increased quality is reflected in program funding and is fully funded. So in the short term, the focus is on ensuring programs are sustainable beyond the Race to the Top Early Learning Challenge Fund grant. I wanted to mention one success. Um, that I think is, is worth mentioning. Um, an additional $2.1 million was included in the long bill last legislative session to provide quality improvement grants and technical assistance for providers who enroll in the child care assistance program. I also uh, would mention that you keep in mind that state agencies and early childhood partners continue to advocate for increased early childhood resources within state agency budgets as well as legislative requests. The third and final component of smarter management um, is the effective use of data. So one of the action items within this logic model is to establish a governance structure for planning, implementation, and maintenance of data collection and information sharing. The short-term goal is to have a better understanding of the early childhood workforce and early childhood programs across the state. Um, as you know, um, workforce and 
better quality or other component areas of this grant. So I'm going to leave, leave it to the project leads uh, to talk more specifically about the technology systems being developed to support the effective use of data in upcoming slides. Mm -hmm. So we're going to advance the slide here. Um, this slide really hones in on the short-term goals that were identified in the overall Smarter Management Logic Model slide. Um, so it really talks to progress made towards the short-term goals, and I would like to highlight a couple of the bullets on this slide. Um, the first bullet mentions House Bill 141317, which focuses on CCAP reform. Within the statute, there's language that specifically relates to tiered reimbursement rates. The idea is that there will be increased child care assistance program reimbursement rates for children who are enrolled in the higher levels of quality within the next generation quality rating and improvement system. And so a significant collaboration that I wanted to mention is the CCAP Implementation Joint Task Force with representatives from the Early Childhood Leadership Commission and County Departments of Human Services who are working together to guide the implementation of this significant reform. I also wanted to mention within the collaboration component um, that last week the Early Childhood in School Readiness Legislative Commission convened for the first time. This commission is comprised of three representatives and three senators who will study issues concerning early childhood and school readiness and report to the Legislative Council regarding their findings. This report may include recommendations for legislation. CDE and CDHS presented jointly during the first meeting along with many other partners committed to early childhood in an effort to collaborate efforts and create a sustainable early childhood system within Colorado. It is anticipated that future meetings will continue to emphasize this multi-layered collaboration effort that is currently underway within the state. So this slide addresses the Smarter Management budget. To mention some specific line items in this budget, um, I will tell you a little bit about the Early Childhood Councils. They were awarded $930,000 to support infrastructure. Um, that funding is still being spent um, and invoiced through CDHS, so it is not a fully accounted for here. An additional $2.4 million is allocated in future years for local communities to support implementation of grant deliverables. Funding is also allocated for state, and per state personnel and partners to participate in federal TA opportunities such as grant meetings, grantee meetings, and next year there is funding to support the development of a sustainability plan. Finally, I wanted to mention that a communication request for proposal will be posted soon to solicit vendors interested in developing and implementing a communication plan and campaign for the Race to the Top Early Learning Challenge Fund project areas. As I understand it, there will be time for questions at the end of the presentation, so now I would like to turn it over to my colleague here in the Office of Early Childhood, Karen N. Bowden. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and I uh, appreciate you being on the call. Um, my name is First Years, Artist Point, going through the quality improvement process. Um, we will be doing this through several, several avenues. Um, one is to provide providers with support um, through our early childhood partners, um, partners such as our child care councils, our resource and referral agencies, our licensing specialists. Um, professional development coordinators. Um, in addition, county level um, folks will be implementing tiered reimbursement, which will also support providers in accepting children with CCAP um, in hopes of creating more access for those children. Additionally, we will be launching a marketing campaign, as Cheryl just uh, referenced, um, that will be um, providing materials and supports to providers uh, to communicate with their clients. Um, as well as a campaign that's targeting our families who are um, participating in the early childhood system um, on why quality really matters and what does this QRIS system really mean to them? What does those quality levels, uh, what do they measure? Um, so that they can get comfortable with um, the system that we're building here in Colorado. 
Another goal under better quality for us is to build, we're building a robust and supportive technology system that will support providers through the um, beginning of their journey um, of continuous quality improvement all the way through the process of um, going through a quality rating. Um, there will be incentives and supports for providers to support, in the, uh, to support themselves in the quality journey. And some of those um, incentives then, um, will be things such as technical assistance, uh, coaching, uh, grants for materials and things that are needed inside the program, professional development for staff. Um, these are just some of the um, technical or some of the assistance that will be provided. Um, there will be, um, you know, as, as the programs work through their journey um, all the way through the on-site uh, assessment, which will um, be conducted by trained and reliable assessors, um, and they'll be performing the quality assessment in order um, to assign quality levels for each provider participating. And finally, um, another widely important goal that we have is the validation of our rating system. And this will look at the structure, the tools, and the rating levels um, to determine if the data collection and process is moving the state onto the, the right course of action as we um, increase our quality improvement in the state of Colorado. And if you want to advance to the next slide, I spent um, time kind of going through these um, short-term goals. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this first slide. Um, I really wanted to spend more focused time here on what we'll be doing to support the um, quality efforts to support providers. And I mentioned the marketing campaign. Um, tiered reimbursement will be coming through on a county-by-county -county basis to help support providers as well. Um, I mentioned the development of um, this technology system that we were that we're building, and it will interconnect with other technology systems, um, such as our professional development system, which um, will be discussed here shortly. Um, I mentioned also that we'll be going through an evaluation process. So, as you'll see um, on the next slide, there ha there is a total budget. Um, for this particular project area of $23 million. And while we haven't spent much of that at this point in time, um, a greater portion of this will be um, spent on these projects, as you can see listed here, the quality rating assessments, quality improvement, um, technical assistance, and the database implementations and builds. Um, a lot of those dollars will be spent this year, as well as in the coming years, to support these efforts. At and at this point, I am going to go ahead and turn this over to our next presenter, which is Joyce Johnson. And she will be discussing the next section of our grant, um, which is Deeper Understanding of Children. Thanks, Karen. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Joyce Johnson, and I am with the Colorado Department of Education in the Office of Early Learning and School Readiness, and I coordinate the expansion of the Results Matter initiative. Um, so I wanted to take just a few minutes to talk about the projects that fit into the category of deeper understanding of children, because ultimately all of the work that has been discussed before, the smarter management projects and the um, higher quality project, are being done to help Colorado improve the services that it provides to its youngest citizens. And in order to know whether or not those efforts are having their intended impact, you have to know something about the children and how they're faring. And so um, the opportunities that we have to develop that deeper understanding come through uh, the four different projects that you see listed as inputs on this screen. So the kindergarten readiness efforts, and the results matter expansion project, the standardized developmental screening, and the early learning and development guidelines. Um, and three of uh, those are highlighted in bold um, as being specific to the Race to the Top or Lou Lemming Challenge Fund Grant goals. Um, <clears throat> so those are the ones that I'm going to be concentrating on. Um, really what we're looking for is ensuring that all public school kindergarten children 
as part of the kindergarten readiness efforts, receive more targeted instruction through the use of the um, kindergarten readiness assessment. And if you remember back a few years ago, the cap for k legislation mandated that school districts begin to use a kindergarten readiness assessment measure. <clears throat> um, also, kids are growing and developing, obviously, before they reach kindergarten as well. And so we're interested in knowing a little bit about how they are faring during those years as well. And so part of what the grant is designed to do is increase the number of children that are participating in the Results Matter assessment program by 3,500. And particularly, we are targeting um, community-based child care centers and family child care homes. Uh, and these are not necessarily sites that are connected with something like um, a Head Start program or the Colorado Preschool program, but really are just sort of standing alone. Um, in addition to increasing the number of children that are part of that assessment system, we're also very interested in learning what it takes to really support providers in their use of an assessment system. And therefore, we wanted to uh, focus on providers that may not necessarily be as connected with larger systems, again, like Head Start or school districts, that may already have connections to more ongoing infrastructure. Uh, <clears throat> so if we can go to the next slide, please. We'll talk a little bit about the short-term goals. Um, so this really points out what work has been um, undertaken to date in some of these critical areas. And so, as you can see, under the kindergarten assessment, both the school years 13-14 and 14-15 are being considered phase-in years. Right now, the uh, board, State Board of Education has authorized the use of teaching strategies goals as one instrument that is available for um, the kindergarten assessment work. <clears throat> they will be authorizing others or considering others for review and inclusion on the menu of um, tools that could be used for that purpose. So the, while that is going on, um, districts who want to are going to participate in using the Teaching Strategies Gold system. <clears throat> and in this school year, that going to begin here in a month. We have 108 school districts, 533 schools, and more than 16,000 additional children using Teaching Strategies Gold as part of that project. Um, <clears throat> along with that goes increased collaboration and transition activities between early childhood and the K-12 systems. And you can see that the um, Early Childhood Leadership Commission has committees and is encouraging participants from the K-12 world um, to help us merge those, or, or not merge, but bring those two systems closer together. In terms of uh, using the Results Matter expansion uh, project in community-based ECE settings, <clears throat> there's work going on around finding out currently through a survey of staff and directors what um, sites are already doing or how they already are using assessment systems or understanding that. And that work will be used, the results of that will be used to drive the training and technical assistance that we are providing, um, <clears throat> as well as training on reports, and particularly working with families and using those reports with families. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, the early learning and development guidelines have been embedded into higher education and uh, will be available and accessible to families and providers. And if you haven't already checked out the Early Learning and Developmental Guideline website, I would encourage you all to do that because you can get either a full copy of the guidelines there or pieces of it that may be more targeted towards age groups that you're particularly interested in. Um, and there was a webinar earlier this month that is now available as a recording on the earlylearningcolorado.org website as well. So if you will move to the next slide, I'll briefly touch on budget. Uh, 
And so again, you can see that the projects that are in this particular phase are the uh, Kindergarten Readiness Results Matter Expansion and the ELDGs. And at this point, we've spent a little over one and a half million out of the total $13.4 million budget. Um, so we've, we've got some remaining budget items to spend uh, that will be in continued support for the uh, projects that are part of Results Matter Expansion projects and continued training and communication for, communi for kindergarten readiness as well as the early learning and developmental guidelines. So that, I think, is my time, uh, and I will throw it over to Nancy Linville, who's going to be discussing stronger workforce. Thank you very much, Joyce. This is Nancy Linville. I am the Early Childhood Professional Development Team or Systems Director, and uh, our team uh, works in the Office of Early Learning and School Readiness at the Colorado Department of Education. And the focus of our work is, uh, in Race to the Top Early Learning Challenge, is to focus on creating a stronger workforce. And it's a really exciting area. Uh, as you see here in the logic model, we have key input areas. Uh, one of our big uh, projects is a professional development information system. Increasing higher ed education integration and accessibility, and then a big part of our work is the early childhood competencies for educators and administrators. Our key output areas or our key goal areas for Race to the Top are those that are in the bold for, based uh, in the outputs area. Uh, we are focused on incorporating the new early childhood workforce competency framework into all early childhood degrees and trainings um, in the state of Colorado uh, and having up to 50% of our two- and four-year programs using these early childhood competencies uh, by the end of 2016. Another key area is workforce growth and development, and so ensuring 10% of our professionals advance at least one credential level and make 25% and 25 of them make progress towards the next credential level. And so if you focus on the short-term goal areas, this is where we are focusing our work, our immediate work in the next two years. Um, and the first of these is at the Professional Development Information System, which is a combination workforce registry and learning management system is fully functional. It's uh, not yet. Uh, Stacy is in charge of the slides here, and she was asking if I wanted to move, and I said not yet. Um, and so those four, four simple words, PDIS is fully functional, uh, is a really uh, big part of our work here in 2014 and getting to initial rollout in uh, 2015. And so additionally is that we want everybody that's participating within our early childhood PD system to really understand why we're focused on the early childhood competencies and what we've tried to accomplish in the revision of the early childhood professional credential. So to date, we've had a lot of input from various stakeholder groups, task force groups around the state, um, and then also including the advice and guidance of the Early Childhood PD Advisory. Because at the end of the day, the system that we're creating is a system that will support all of us as early childhood professionals, and so this input and guidance along the way is very, very uh, beneficial. And I also want you to focus on the long-term goals. Within Colorado, we also um, are guided by the Early Learning Professional Development System Plan that was put into place in May 2010. And so this is a journey that we've been on for some time, and the funding from the Race to the Top certainly helps us uh, accelerate the pace uh, of getting the work done. And so yes, Stacy, next slide. And so on this slide, you're going to see what it is that we've accomplished to date um, on the, on the short-term goals. So under PDIS is fully functional, so the design and development uh, is underway. Simply Digi and InfoMedia have been contracted and working with us since March 2014, and we are scheduled for user acceptance testing and piloting this fall. 
Uh, we will share that the work of doing a combined registry and learning management system is, is a leading edge here in the nation. And so we have a lot of states looking for us to be very successful in developing this type of system and then they are, are we are getting lots of calls about when is it going to be ready because they want one just like it. Um, the next goal is early prof EC professionals understand and participate in the PD system. So currently we only have 2,500 EC professionals as credentialed uh, in the voluntary credentialing system. And because of the connections with QRIS, uh, and the way that the credential will be used in helping score the workforce section of QRIS. This will help us accomplish our goal of having 15,000 participants in the PDIS by the end of 2016. And as we are doing this, the Early Childhood PD Advisory will help us design um, reporting progress of what our workforce does look like in the state of Colorado. So in order to help our professionals understand the competencies and the credentials, the level two TQRIS, which are rolling out in fall, in the fall will include modules about the competencies and the professional uh, credential in addition to really helping all of us as professionals understand why the current standards were selected for this next generation of our QRIS and what that quality does uh, in order to support better and increased outcomes for children and families here in Colorado. Another key piece is that we will be guiding and supporting early childhood professionals to take individual responsibility of their career progression. So as part of the PDIS, you'll be able to create your own self-assessment and PD plan that will help you uh, achieve the goals that you have as an EC professional and then also be awarded a credential level from one to six. And then we're going to go to the next slide. And here you'll see that in the area of stronger workforce, our budget is 6.6 .6 million. And in the specific project areas, you will see how um, we are delivering these uh, efforts. So a key focus is early childhood competencies and framework the Professional Development Information System, QRIS Level 2, Incentives and Scholarships, and Statewide Coaching and TA Network. So like other projects, um, when I saw that we'd only spent 364000 it was like we need to get busy. And actually, we are busier in that we have uh, well over a million dollars encumbered. And the specific investments will include $1.75 million in the area of competencies and framework. And these are broken out for implementation to help us identify measures uh, of competency. And then an RFP opportunity that will be available this fall is $750,000 to two and four year uh, college and university programs, training programs, for innovative uh, alignment opportunities with the early childhood competency. So be looking for that. The professional development information system itself is an investment of $1.2 million over the course of the Race to the Top grant. And then incentives and scholarships are an exciting area of a $2 million investment uh, through 2016. And additionally, the statewide coaching and TA network is an investment of $875,000 here in the state of Colorado. And now it will be Joyce Johnson taking the lead in the final section, which is increased family and community engagement. Thank you, Nancy. It's like you and I are engaged in a little game of ping pong here, back and forth with each other. But um, <clears throat> the final section, I believe, is the increased family and community engagement. And so, um, as was mentioned earlier in this webinar, this is really embedded throughout the entire uh, grant and all of the projects have a piece of this. So uh, it falls to me to discuss it, but, that, but um, it really is embedded everywhere. So. Uh, we're starting, as you can see, with the inputs, um, the most critical one being listening to families and communities, because you can't really understand what people want or how to begin providing things in a more useful way to them unless you really truly 
listen and understand their concerns. And so one of the, the first things that we're doing is bringing that willingness into all of this work. Um, and then that, of course, is partnered with not only listening but responding and trying to inform and keep people abreast of all of these developments um, as best we can as we go through these next few years. Um, and then again, the early learning and developmental guidelines obviously have a connection here as they are um, trying to share with families developmental knowledge in a way that is accessible to them and meaningful and relevant for them. And so some of the things that we hope to see as a result of that is um, an increase in the number of families that are actually reached with this information, as well as an increase in the number of families that report using that information, whether it be about child development or about the quality ratings, to make decisions about their own child's early learning and where they um, are choosing to have them go to attend early learning programs. Um, that's going to take coordination of state agency messaging and measures around early childhood. Um, and if we're doing our jobs right, we would hope to also see increased family representation on decision-making bodies that influence uh, policy around early childhood and um, <clears throat> various programs and services that they may be um, partaking of. <clears throat> We'd also like to, to see increased media coverage on early childhood services and the importance of those services and increased legislative support. And um, finally, an increased number of identified family leaders. So some of the short-term goals that we have set for ourselves is that, uh, again, family and community members have increased access to information about child development, um, <clears throat> and that they have increased access to information about the importance of high quality programs and where to find those programs, um, that they feel welcome in the programs that they're wanting to use, and that there's regular two-way communication that is meaningful both to the families and to the providers themselves. So if we can go to the next slide, we'll look at a little bit more in depth on those. <clears throat> so with the, the short-term goals, um, what we're really trying to, to address is, again, the increased access to information about child development. And that's happening predominantly through a couple of different methods. Um, one through the Results Matter Expansion Project and the Kindergarten Entry um, Project as well, both use Teaching Strategies Gold. And as you may be aware already, in that system there is a family portal and families can not only view the documentation that their, um, that their programs are, um, or that their children, excuse me, are involved in, but they can actually add their own documentation to that as well. So if there's a situation in which um, a provider is saying that they're not seeing a child do a certain skill, but the parent has seen that, they can create that documentation and upload it so that you're getting a full um, overview of what that child is capable of doing in a variety of settings. Um, there's also increased access to uh, high quality programs and where to find them and that you can see both the early learning and development guidelines and the QRIS system websites both have information to support parents that are seeking quality child care. In terms of helping families um, access and feel more welcome in services and systems, there are 12 new early childhood programs that are joining the PEAK online system. And if you're not familiar with that, that's sort of a one-stop shop for families to apply for a variety of services and be kind of that single entry point. And we're hoping that that will help families feel more um, connected and more um, that the process of accessing was easier for them through that. So we're hopeful that that's will take place. <clears throat> and then finally, in terms of families and providers uh, having two-way regular ongoing communication, again, the Teaching Strategies Gold system contains specific reports that providers can use as part of conferences, 
and through both the matter and the kindergarten programs, there's um, training being provided to teachers and providers on how to use that report, um, and as well as a toolkit that has been developed, and that will help folks be able to discuss um, authentic assessment principles and practices of families so that they understand why their um, early childhood setting may be engaging in that practice. Um, and then finally, as I, I know um, people are aware of already, there are points in the new QRIS system that will be awarded for those programs that are engaging families um, through the, their programming. So uh, there isn't a budget page for this particular item because, as I mentioned earlier, these goals are really um, woven throughout all of the different projects. So the, the budget that supports this work is incorporated in the, pro in the budget that you've seen earlier. So I think that that is where I'm going to leave things and give it back to Stacy, I believe, at this point. And Joyce, this is actually Nancy. We have one question right now, and then Stacy will be available for additional questions. But the question is uh, addressing compensation issues in the field of early childhood. And this question comes from Lisa Franklin, and thank you very much for this question. We know that compensation disparities in the, in the field uh, are an issue, and the one that Lisa asked specifically about uh, were licensed K-12 teachers and pre-K teachers in school districts. Districts. And we know additionally that this, the disparities uh, really span from community-based early childhood providers, uh, teachers, assistance teachers, family child care. And I'd say the one piece is that having more specific information and data in Colorado is a starting point for us in answering this question and gaining uh, additional supports and funding for, to address compensation. We need to first be able to, to speak to who we are um, as an EC profession, what levels of credentials we do have, what level of training and early childhood education. And so uh, most recently this topic has been one uh, that has been discussed at the Early Childhood Leadership Commission. It is also part of the Early Learning Statewide Plan, Compensation Equitable Compensation is a key piece, and then also with uh, the Early Childhood School Readiness Commission, the legislative commission that is just forming some task groups. So it's certainly a top priority. Lisa, we don't have answers. It's a topic that we bring to the forefront and then are hopeful to put a compensation strategy and a, re and a compensation reform plan together that goes hand in hand with the increased uh, investments in quality improvement here in Colorado. Thank you, Nancy. This is Stacy. We have another question coming in from um, Barbara Dodds, and uh, she is asking, how are non-council counties accessing elements of the efforts outlined today? And I know Cheryl mentioned um, the RFP going out and some of the uh, local collaboration that's happening. And while the local collaboration is happening directly with um, councils and uh, child care resource and referrals, the um, once the QRAS and PDIS are developed and launched, there will be full coverage across the state for all of these activities um, in, in terms of child care programs or other individuals interested in accessing the efforts um, to engage in. And what I would say is as these um, activities develop, to please consider um, or to please um, visit the Office of Early Childhood website frequently. We're using both that website and the um, newsletter as a way to um, as a way to uh, communicate uh, the fast-paced work that's happening with the grant. In addition to this webinar series, so thank you for your question. We'll give it a minute or so more, and as I said, it, uh, to the extent we're unable to address questions um, submitted, uh, we will um, uh, 
post the questions and the answers on the website uh, where the recording is going to be posted on the um, Office of Early Childhood website, which you can see here on this slide. And I just want to take, um, take this time to, um, again, thank all of you for joining us and um, taking time out of your busy day to hear a little more about uh, the activities of the grant and um, just your interest. So it doesn't look like we have any additional questions. Um, so I will go ahead and... Um, you know, again, just wish you all um, a, a good rest of your day, and thank you for joining us. And um, um, please visit uh, the link that you see, the links that you see here, for further information. And we will be sending um, those of you who have registered uh, handouts um, from today and information on the next uh, webinar series topic for August. So, thank you all.